<laughs> Bang it, Larry. Atta boy. Okay. Okay, welcome to uh, policy and procedures. Um, I see we have quorum. So our first uh, item here is uh, the uh, adoption of the agenda. Uh, motioned by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the agenda for February 19th, 2013 regular meeting of the Policy and Priorities Committee be adopted. Comments or questions? Call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Okay. A lot of noise going on out there. Could we... Uh, Get the door closed or oh, I can't close the door. Oh. I can't close the door. Close the door. Oh, close the door. 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 Close the any of the councillors have any keen interests? No, uh, Mr. Chair. No? Okay, seeing none. Bond. So our next item is uh, new business. Uh, motion by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the issue sheet for agenda item 5.1, naming the corporate assets policy, be received, and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows that policy and priorities committee recommend that council adopt the naming policy. For the Town of Pelham corporate assets. Comments or questions? There being none, I ask the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Okay, our next item is uh, 5.2. There's a motion from Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak. That issue sheet for agenda item 5.2, refund of the appellant fees, be received. And that the recommendation contained therein be a, approved as follows that the policy and priorities committee recommend that council approve the authority to the committee of adjustment and the property standards committee to order a refund as outlined in policy p100 slash 08 refund of committee of adjustment or property standard fees comments or questions Councillor Gurley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I do have a, a question or a concern in the, the second paragraph of, of the policy as it comes through. Uh, if, if a committee determines that the town is in error when considering any matter, uh, it, it has the right to do something. Now, normally the procedure, if it goes to committee of adjustment or, or property standards, it's reported back to, uh, to council first and then the decision is made and and the, the appeal goes from there. I, I'm just looking, is, is this uh, a bit misleading in the fact that uh, the town is in error and the Committee of Adjustment can, can refund the monies where the town wouldn't do that? I, I, just to clarify, maybe I'm not understanding this properly, so uh, you know, I can ask this question and if I can get the clarity on that, it, it just isn't clear to me that uh, a committee appointed by council will have the opportunity to do things that, that I believe are acts of council. Uh, perhaps uh, Mr. CAO, you could answer that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To answer the councillor's question, um, council has the authority to delegate its some of it or some of its power to individuals or, or agencies. Uh, the Committee of Adjustment and um, um, the Property Standards Committee are quasi-judicial bodies. They do have certain powers that have been granted to them, like the decision-making power and the process to repeal. Uh, a property standards order issued by the town, etc. So you're you're all you're doing is you're expanding their power uh, on a relatively limited scope to be able to offer a refund um, to people who apply uh, under specific conditions. So in the second case of committee of the committee of adjustment, if somebody is forced to go to the committee of adjustment and pay the fee uh, to go there. Uh, all because it turns out the town made an error for whatever reason. The committee then is authorized to uh, order refunding back of that payment to the individual parties that applied uh, because they wouldn't have had to have gone if it was uh, not for the town's um, mistake. So it's a, it's a rare occasion. It happens from time to time. It's a matter um, uh, uh, of fairness. 
Uh, and it's also a matter that had been brought up by council um, in previous meetings with regards to these two uh, two groups. And, and Mr. Chairman, I would ask uh, uh, the opportunity of the clerk to comment on uh, on this as well. She was part of the policy process. Okay. Here, yep. Mr. Chair, it also would be seen as a mechanism to save time for the applicants because it would be um, oftentimes a more timely process to bring a report to council um, if there was an error made on behalf of staff, whereas it could go, uh, the application would be able to directly move forward and um, recommendations could be made to the Committee of Adjustment um, to reimburse the fee or to waive the fee as well. Okay. Right. Any further questions or comments? Yes, yes further to that, I, I, I agree 100% if there's an error in law. And, and in fact, that to me is a no brainer that that is gone. You definitely made a mistake in interpreting a law or, or enforcing a law or whatever, and that's that's it. But it, it's quite often some of these things are not truly law. They may be uh, an expression of an opinion, and the opinion, my opinion, very well may differ from yours in any kind of a debate. So, uh, you know, does the committee have the power to override a decision that was made by council or an opinion that was made by council? Just. Again, I, I'm having difficulty with that. I understand fully what the CAO is, is saying in that, but uh, you know, the definition of the word error, I think, is the thing that I'm looking for. Um, Mr. CAO, Mr. Chairman, my understanding, I, I, I have to confess I'm not entirely clear on the, that I understand the question, but uh, having said that, council has the authority over the uh, Committee of Adjustment, so council's word is final. Uh, so I don't believe they have the, the opportunity to overturn the decision of council. Um, but again, having said that, it's that's kind of different jurisdictions. You've already given them the jurisdiction to deal with adjustment issues, Committee of Adjustment issues. So. Uh, it's simply it's simply uh, to uh, to be fair to someone who uh, has had to come and pay the fee uh, to the committee uh, only to find that the problem uh, that they thought was there is in fact was a result of an error uh, by town staff and that's a very tight parameter uh, that the committee would would make that decision okay I, um, thank you very much for, for that that's fine and that decision would come from the committee not an individual correct that, uh, Mr. Chair, yes, that's correct. It would have to be a majority uh, vote by the committee. Mr. Mayor, do you have a question? Uh, just, just a comment. I think it's, um, you know, we, we talked about it at our last meeting. I think it's a good policy, a good way to go. I can remember, I'm looking at my colleagues around the table, but I can remember five or six times when over the last, you know, it might be one a year, um, but but there's there have been some errors. A report comes to council. We, you know, we try to understand the entire thing and, and don't have that parameter. And then they say, oh, by the way, we should uh, exempt the fee because of and refund the fee. So uh, t to me, this is sort of a housekeeping thing. This is saying uh, the body that sees them, the Committee of Adjustment, um, if there's an error, they should say, you know what, you shouldn't have had to make a, a variance application. There was an error from staff or there was this particular error or that error you can refund it and I think it, it just makes logical sense it will uh, keep these items uh, at the body where it should be and also um, move the move the process further along so I am supportive thank you okay any further comments or questions Councillor Rubiak thank you mr. chair and um, I, I'm mindful of the fact that of the two paragraphs in the policy they, they really deal with with somewhat different things and really for clarity I just want to comment the second, with regard to the Committee of Adjustment, uh, is meant to deal with issues that arise when people um, rely on information given them by the town that in the fullness of time turns out not to be accurate and they shouldn't be out the money. And that, that, that's clearly an understandable situation. The first of the paragraphs, though, deals with uh, the Property Standards Committee uh, looking at cases that may be brought to them by way of appeal and determining that there's merit to the appeal and therefore having the right to uh, to return some of or, or all of uh, the fees that might have been paid. This arises out of a discussion that we had during the budget process in which we learned that in fact the fees for appealing uh, a property standards uh, uh, issue are, are pretty prohibitive. And I think that, that in, the, in the discussion that we had, a suggestion that I made was maybe if they're successful they should get the money back. But I think really the, the, the purpose of that statement was to make the appeal process more accessible to those who, who
who felt that they, they needed it. And indeed, if this is the best way of doing it, then, then I'm going to be entirely supportive. I'm just wondering whether, whether um, uh, the CAO or staff might have considered perhaps just reducing the cost of, of making an appeal as a means of doing that and, and what the outcome of that was. Mr. CAO. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in response or, to that, yeah, we did. Me, sorry. The chief may have comment. Go ahead, and I'll add my two cents after. Sorry. Um, staff did look at that issue. Um, the what we what we analyzed was okay. First, the first question is, what is the reason for the amount of the fee? Uh, obviously, that's a pretty logical place to start. Um, and when you calculate the amount of time it takes to um, uh, go through a property standards committee process, uh, you realize that the fee is only a fraction of the actual cost. Um, and you look at staff time, uh, committee member time, um, resources, all the things that go into a hearing uh, adds up quite, quite quickly. And $500 is more of a um, response to uh, to recover part of that cost, um, it also is an, um, It also prevents frivolous uh, uh, appeals coming forward. You want to have some benchmark that if you're coming forward with appeal to the committee, that it's a you know you're confident that it's a legitimate appeal, um, and uh, it 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 serves the function of screening out frivolous um, appeals. Um, having said that, it's only fair then, and by extension, that if you uh, if the property standards committee was to find that uh, you know they were to overturn an order uh, provided to uh, an individual or, or, or group that uh, they should be refunded the money again it's a matter of fairness um, and that that in staff's opinion is the best way to go about it Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, I ask the question. All those in favor? Carried. <coughs> Our next item is a motion from Councillor or Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley, that the issue sheet for agenda item 5.3 regarding designating designated parking in the downtown be received and that the recommendation contained therein be approved that the policy and priorities committee recommend that council approve the relocation of the designated accessible parking space directly in front of the property known municipally as 1407 South Pelham Street known as lifetime vision care in the first spot north of their driveway on the east side of South Pelham Street as this spot is free of obstruction and allows for easy access to the main walkway which travels from the TD Bank to the Meridian Credit Union. Comments or questions? Mr. Mayor? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm very pleased to see this. Um, I was surprised to learn uh, at our parking in the downtown session a couple of weeks ago that the, the spot had been uh, changed from what Council had approved because of a uh, uh, something that was blocking that uh, as is outlined in the report that was blocking that initial accessible parking area um, and and then when it was changed the business owner who was directly in you know impacted by that with had raised a number of concerns uh, this to me seems like it's the uh, you know a very logical sol solution to uh, to the problem so I appreciate staff bringing this forward I, I wondered if if staff had a chance to speak with um, the vision clinic or whether they'll do that now that if committee approves this it doesn't say it in the report have we done that uh, mr. Mal? <coughs> no, we, we haven't they have not been uh, okay yet, but they will be okay Thank you. I think it's it's certainly important. We heard the uh, presentation last September to have accessible parking mm -hmm. on that side of uh, of the street uh, in that area. So I'm very supportive of this and uh, appreciate the work of staff. Thank you. Okay. Any further? Uh, 
Councillor Durling. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I did have a question earlier, and I think I got an unofficial answer. And just you know, for the record, uh, both uh, handicapped parking spots or accessible parking spots are on the east side of the street, and we have none on the west side. Uh, you know, is it, would it be advisable to have one on each side of the street rather than both on on the same side? And and I. I I think I know the answer, but I think if we if we bring this forward, uh, you know, certainly that would. Ask, I've been asked this question from others, and I just just want to bring it up. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Mr. Mano, we evaluated that um, in the earlier view of this of the park installed out there, and the intent was, or what we observed was, there were already spaces like private handicap spaces at the, at the businesses on the west side of the street um, they each some had a couple of them uh, you know it, it didn't seem that there was a need to have more space on that side whereas on the east side uh, topography was a problem with access from the back parking lots thank you okay any further comments or questions I have one question for mr. Mano. Um the spot in front of uh, lifetime vision um, <coughs> is a spot that tends to uh, be piled snow is that something that we can keep an eye on through the winter I know next year we're clearing it all but for the balance of this year I'm assuming this designation starts right away it'll start immediately and um, or as soon as we get the signs up and we can certainly direct our, our contractor to make sure that he finds another location for that okay. snow to go great thank you okay any further comments okay seeing none I call the question all those in favor those opposed carried thank you our next item is uh, a motion from Councillor Gurley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the issue sheet for agenda item 5.4 regarding Pelham Water Loading Station water hauler screening policy be received, and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows that policy and priorities committee recommend to Council that the policy, policy water loading station water hauler screening policy be adopted. Comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Kersing. Uh, just a comment, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm particularly pleased to see this uh, taking place. I think it just enhances um, and sends a message to our community that, that we as council and the owners of the, uh, in the terms of the law, uh, of the water system are very concerned about the safety of all of our, all of our citizens. Uh, whether they're on uh, piped water or whether on getting their water um, by way of haulers. This ensures at least some level of surety that uh, the haulers are uh, have met the regional uh, guidelines and uh, gives us some comfort as well that our, our water is remaining safe until it arrives at the owner's uh, cistern. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Mr. Mayor? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, again, I appreciate it for all the reasons that Councillor Kersey stated. I did have a, uh, a business owner that approached me, <coughs> I guess, last spring. Uh, he does repairs to septic tanks, and he has a, a bulk tank that he fills up, and, and um, individuals where he's working with uh, water tanks, I guess, he, he fixes, use that water and, and drink from it, etc. So I think he was told at that time that he couldn't use the station. I guess a roundabout way to get to a question, Mr. Chair, and that is if if a business has a public health certificate, then this allow them to buy bulk water. Is that essentially what this is saying? Madam Treasurer, can you answer that question? I could not. Or either one of you? <laughs> if they have that, that certificate from the um, from the health department, then they're approved to load water there. Um, and but the vehicles are all modified to for potable water use. Uh, they're not just your typical tank truck. And this is kind of formalized the process. That's the kind of uh, uh, just any old truck showing up there with all your equipment fittings and uh, tanks, that sort of thing. Okay. Well, I, I think I got the answer to that, and and I don't think it was any old truck, but uh, but I can get in contact with the individual once this is approved, and they can talk to staff. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Ruliak? Thank you. Uh, so it's kind of obvious, and, and, and I'm sure the answer is as obvious as the question, but this pres presupposes that Niagara Region Public Health is in the business of inspecting these trucks. 
they have the capability, they have the process, they know all that stuff, regular and good. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further questions or comments? <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to ask the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Our next item. Item is a motion from Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey. That the item she is sorry, sorry. Nope. Start over. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so motion from Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Durley. That issue sheet for agenda item 5.5 regarding the 2013 water and wastewater budget presentation be received, and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows that Policy and Priorities Committee recommend to Council that the 2013 Water and Wastewater budgets be approved and that the Water and Wastewater rates be implemented retroactive to January 1st, 2013. Comments or questions? Okay. Oh. Mr. Mayor? Well, just to comment, Mr. Chair, that other communities are uh, talking about much higher increases, uh, neighboring communities and I, we could hear from the treasurer as to the reasons why we're able to keep it down, but I suspect it's because of the uh, extensive work that we've done. It is in the report in terms of uh, replacing uh, faulty water mains, uh, cast iron mains, uh, also water meters and, and the water meter program. So, you know, the, 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 the increase is, there is an increase, but it's much less than what has been talked about in other communities. And I think if you look at to Appendix 2, uh, the impact for a typical home uh, would, as I read it, is around the 2% as opposed to 5 or more percent that other communities are talking about. So uh, kudos to uh, the staff for putting this together and uh, let's, let's keep up the work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, no more comments or questions. I call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Uh, our next item is a motion from Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey, that the issue sheet for agenda item 5.6 regarding the sidewalk encroachment policy be received and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows that Policy and Priorities Committee recommend to Council that the sidewalk encroachment policy be approved and that staff be directed to implement the application procedure not later than the end of March 2013. Comments or questions? Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm very pleased to see this uh, policy statement come forward and be all of our thoughts be crystallized in a very succinct way. Um, the one question I did have, I was wondering if Council would have the privilege to uh, or the opportunity to have a look at the procedure and the application that uh, would be practiced. Uh, direct that to Mr. CAO. <laughs> We're shaking his head madly. Uh, you may see the brutes. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, to answer the Council's question, um, the policy statement is um, quite uh, succinct. Uh, the policy statement, quite honestly, is, is the easy part. Uh, the staff, particularly the uh, the clerk, is working on the process. Uh, the process. We looked at this policy when we were drafting it, and, and and realized quite quickly that after nine pages of policy, that we were probably going down the wrong road, uh, and we needed to break the policy statement away from the procedure. So the application process is still under development. Um, but I think the policy speaks quite clear to the fact that a council supports uh, this activity uh, for a number of reasons, um, uh, including alignment with the uh, urban design guidelines, uh, downtown beautification efforts, etc. Um, but council also understands and has heard the public in relation to accessibility issues um, and concerns with, uh, you know, obstruction on a sidewalk. Uh, so those issues um, are, are, are dealt with uh, in the policy, but the procedure will outline how uh, we, we process and approve those applications for use. So um, certainly when that work is done, which I expect to be in the next few weeks, so we'll bring that back uh, as an information item for Council. Terrific. Okay. 
further comments or questions? Okay. Councilor Rudiak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I just want to um, echo my view that this is a, an excellent and positive move for the town to make, to take the view that that we are supportive of the use of, uh, of, of sidewalks, uh, and to humanize them, to make them great places to be. And as we heard in the previous discussion, another reason why people would want to, uh, to be in Pelham. It's called a sidewalk encroachment policy, though. It seems, uh, seems rather negative. We're talking about sidewalk use policy or sidewalk maximization policy. Encroachment sounds so negative. Uh, just a comment. Further comments or questions, Councillor Pat? Uh, quickly, it takes care of a situation we've been dealing with without any formalization of a policy direction. Now we got it. Let's work on it. Yeah. Let's encourage business and be uh, here, here. ensure that everyone now understands where we stand on when it comes to uh, this type of uh, protocol. And look, here, here. thank you. Here, here. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Seeing none, ask the question. All those in favor? Those opposed, carried. Okay, our next item is a motion from Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey, that the issue sheet for agenda item 6.1.1 regarding the policy to establish policies, Council slash 02 be received and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows, that the priority, sorry, the policy and priorities committee recommend to council that policy council slash R slash zero two policy to establish policies be repealed and replaced with policy council two zero one dash zero zero corporate policy and bylaw. Comments or questions? <laughs> just, just, just a comment again. I think this is this is great. We've got a process uh, in mind how to go about the uh, the huge job of tackling these policies and uh, uh, starting with getting rid of some repetition. <laughs> and I think that that's uh, that's just, just excellent. Glad we're doing it. Looking forward to uh, to this discussion. Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have one question again directed at our CAO. In the uh, opening paragraph of this policy, it speaks to the fact that council is responsible to develop and evaluate policies and programs, but also to ensure that administrative, administrative policies, practices, and procedures, et cetera, et cetera, are um, in place and uh, uh, to implement the, these decisions. So is that inherent in this policy that um, and understood that, that procedures, et cetera, will be automatically brought forward to council for information and comment um, as a policy is developed and procedures are put in place to and to enact that policy will council have an opportunity to review the procedures to ensure in fact carry out this this policy that we would ensure that the procedures are in keeping with the policy <laughs> that sounds like a lot of it. <laughs> I'll let you try that one no you tackle that no. one <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Okay. Perfect. That's all I need to know. <laughs> as far as council seeing procedures, yes, uh, certainly. I mean, the council can look at any uh, process or policy. I just would say that as far as, the, again, going back to the, uh, the concept of crystal clear role clarity, council's job is policy, staff's job is procedure. So if you want to see a procedure, um, absolutely, he, and those. I think it makes sense to present the procedure as an information piece as policy is developed, so that council has an understanding of how it will be implemented. Um, but the actual implementation process is a staff function, and um, if there are issues with that, uh, the CIO is held accountable to council to uh, uh, to make sure those are dealt with effectively. <laughs> As a follow-up, Mr. Chair, um, well, I understand the uh, separation of, of roles. Um, I guess this policy, or, or as I understand this policy, it's it's um, placed upon us as council a responsibility to ensure that the, that the implementation of our decisions are in keeping <coughs> with our intent. So, if 
we are receive the information of the procedures and have questions regarding those procedures and find things within those procedures that don't necessarily carry out the intent of the policy that we we put forth we should have and i think it's incumbent in this policy that we have the right to comment on that and and perhaps ask uh, or give direction to staff to to review that is that not is that not the case uh, Mr. Chairman, to answer the councillor's question, um, I, I would I would say my advice to the council on that matter is partially that is partially a correct statement. Uh, in the context of um, is the policy being carried out effectively by the administration, that is a question that is uh, uh, has to be asked regularly of council to the CAO and, and the CIO only. Uh, for response back if there is if the policy is not being effectively carried out because there's a problem with the procedure That's the CAO's problem and council can certainly direct at any time uh, Our policy is not being carried out uh, Effectively the way that we design it go back and make sure it is and then it would be the CAO's role To ensure that the, the procedures are then corrected in order to align better with the council policy Perfect. Does that make yeah, sense? That makes perfect sense Pat. And <clears throat> notwithstanding that, I think Mr. CEO, you're quite correct. And previous experience is it's implied that there is compliance on procedures within the context of whatever policy you set. And as I've been uh, noted many times talking to legal advisors on this, we're not here to instruct you step by step what to do. We set the parameters of what the raison d'etre <coughs> is for that particular. You set it in place. However, if something goes wrong or there are things that come by, whether it's a complaint or there's a, it doesn't seem to apply appropriately to the particular setting, then in that case, it's your responsibility administratively to bring it back and say, we need to correct this. Mm -hmm. Or in fact, in some cases, do both, adjust the policy to comply. So uh, it's clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the discussion that colleagues are having around the table. Um, and, and I agree with it. And I also want to note that um, two things. The, the first is we're, we're replacing a policy from uh, 1994, which is very similar to what this, what the policy is. But I think it, what this new policy does is it, it does give crystal clear role definition. Uh, there's actually some definitions in that in that old policy which match what's being proposed in this policy. Um, the second point is, as I reflect back on the last year, just over, I think it was 12 or 13 months ago, this council had some discussions about having things written down and the importance of, of writing things down and agreeing to it and, and saying this is what we agree to. Um, so although it, it seems like a, an odd thing to have a policy on how to enact policies, um, it's, it's important and appropriate for for bodies to come to agreement and to say this is what we agree on and this is how we're going to do it mm -hmm. right. and moving forward and I think this this document uh, and the other policies that we're adopting uh, tonight will allow us to uh, to do that and continue Same. to focus on policies continue to focus on the bigger issues uh, that, that face our municipality like some of the issues that we've talked about recently um, so I'm appreciative of this and look forward to the process. Thank you. Okay. Or the policy or whatever I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Any further comments? Okay. Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. So we got a little change here. Um, we're going to combine the next three items yeah. on the uh, yeah. agenda. And okay, so uh, a motion from Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Kersey, that the issue sheets for agenda items 6.1.2, 6.1.3, and 6.1.4 regarding sexual harassment in the workplace council slash zero three corporate modified work policy council slash zero four corporate recruitment policy council slash five be received and that the recommendations contained therein be approved as follows that the policy and priorities committee recommend to council that the following policies be rescinded 
sexual harassment in the workplace council slash zero three corporate modified work policy council slash zero four and corporate recruitment policy council slash zero five comments or questions seeing none I ask the question all those in favor those opposed none carried Item is a motion from Councillor Kersey, seconded by Councillor Papp, that the issue sheet for item for agenda item 6.1.5 regarding citizen appointments, Council slash R06 be received, and that recommendation contained therein be approved as follows: that the Policy and Priorities Committee recommend that Council rescind Policy Council slash 06 citizen appointments and approve the public appointment policy comments or questions mr. mayor thank you very much mr. chair um, <clears throat> I appreciate uh, again what's what's uh, been put before us uh, and was intrigued when the the, the last paragraph here is saying that um, council may at its discretion provide more direction um, I think I think it, I'd like to do that now and propose to my colleagues some additions to this policy. Certainly the, the policy is currently written speaks about um, the importance of volunteers, um, volunteers across the community reflecting different elements of the community um, and the, the need for the best candidate to, uh, to be involved in, in the various agencies, boards, commissions uh, that we have here with the town. But I reflect back to our strategic plan uh, when we spoke about how we wanted to recognize volunteers and I reflect upon the annual uh, peer awards that we that we do each year there's no part of this policy that talks about as I can see it that talks about recognizing volunteers for significant milestones we just did some of that this evening with with our firefighters um, and I think it would be important for us to include something about uh, volunteers being recognized uh, especially uh, town volunteers as they are already it's not changing something a practice that we have but I think we should enshrine it in policy that's a separate uh, thank you mr. chairman I, I agree uh, with the mayor's uh, comments I would recommend to council consider that as a standalone policy as volunteer recognition policy okay. um, I think it would be um, practical to proceed in that fashion so I'd, I'd move then mr. chair that we um, direct staff to come back with a uh, volunteer recognition policy perfect okay just give us a second here okay do we have discussion on that we'll have staff just prepare yep okay for the next meeting for our next meeting Sure, if you can. Thank you. The next PMP meeting. Okay. Perfect. Okay. How do we read that out? Staff be directed to prepare a volunteer recognition policy for consideration at the next policy and priorities meeting. Okay. All right. So uh, Councillor Derling. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the idea behind this is perfect there, there's no question about it however uh, it lacks a bit in the fact that if there is a vacancy really the procedure and, and protocol to replace uh, or fill vacant positions uh, should something be included there to give a uh, procedure as to how new appointments will be in there how, how we recruit new people and and so on is, is this necessary or not I'm just looking at that just seems to be lacking uh, to answer the councillor's question, I think that part of the answer is procedural. So in the sense of advertising or recruiting, that's the process of which we would follow in order to fulfill the policy requirement. Um, having said that, I think that things like vacancies and, and, and uh, other housekeeping matters a lot of times are dealt with under the terms of reference of individual committees that have been established by council. So they're, 
you know, if it's the um, uh, Active Transportation Committee, they have a terms of reference. Summerfest has a terms of reference, and those um, those are often designed to deal with such issues. So um, the committees themselves can make recommendation back to council on uh, appointments to their boards or um, things like the library board council has the function of appointing. So um, that will happen as a matter, matter of course, but again, the process by which we use to fill or, or fill a vacancy or recruit board members um, uh, is sort of a separate matter as opposed to the policy statement. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Another item, uh, and I think this one fits here, um, and that is about uh, appointees or volunteers being trained. Uh, I'm thinking about provincial requirements or town requirements for training. Committee of Adjustment, for instance, has a training process that they go through. Um, and, in, and indeed, we encourage ongoing training and, uh, and improvement. I think that should be um, put in this policy as well, that appointees, when first appointed, must be trained by the various committees to meet provincial and town requirements, something like that. Uh, I think it speaks to uh, the need to have um, highly qualified appointees, but also uh, to meet various requirements. So I put it to my colleagues that uh, something like that I think should be included. Everyone's okay with that? We'll all yeah. agree to yeah. uh, amend yeah. it. Okay. Mr. 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 Chairman, just so I'm clear, the staff will amend it to add the, the, the training and education component. Yes. Um, and uh, the recommendation is for uh, the policy uh, as amended to be referred up to council or report back to this committee? I think it's the council. I think it's, so, it's okay. not a big issue. No. Move that, Mr. Chair, and I'm not sure. That. Okay. <laughs> We're just gonna find out. The staff correction should be by motion and voted on. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So, so, so you to I have that as a motion. So you just need to put. It. Okay. Just need to call the question. Okay. All right. All we need to do is call the question. So I'll call the question. All those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Mr. Chair, uh, sorry for the for the other item. It okay. Is now the time to. To move that other item regarding uh, volunteer recognition. Okay. Yes, it is. Another staff direction. We move that, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Do we have any more input on that? From anyone? Any more comments or questions? No. Nope. We just simply call the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Call the question, on <coughs> Mr. Mayor's amendment. All those in favor? Yes. Okay. Yes, we did. Thank you. We get to this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Our next item is a motion from Councillor Kersey, seconded by Councillor Papp that the issue sheet for agenda item 6.2.1 regarding the draft environmental protection bylaw be received and that the recommendation contained therein be approved as follows. That the policy and priorities committee recommend that council approve the environmental protection bylaw as presented. Comments or questions? Councillor Rubiak. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to express, first of all, how, how pleased I am that this, uh, this matter is, is before us and ready for, uh, for, for decision making. And to express my appreciation to staff for the job that was done in preparing uh, this particular bylaw. It's, it's well done, and in particular because it deals with the specific issue that's, that's in front of us that has been uh, a problem to the town for, uh, for some little time. And that it, uh, it was written in a way that um, that took into account most of the feedback that we received with regard to the watch out for, if you will, uh, with regard to a bylaw like this. Uh, clearly, 
uh, the uh, issues that were presented to us earlier with regard to concerns about normal farming practice or uh, people doing things that are completely innocent uh, being prohibited have all been left out of this. This, this, this bylaw deals with the heart of the issue, and the heart of the issue, of course, is is uh, the creation of an opportunity for people to dump waste in, in, in our municipality and uh, to do, doing that to the detriment of, of um, neighbours and, and the community generally. So I'm, I'm pleased with, uh, with the, uh, the bylaw as, as written in terms of its intent, but I do have some concern, uh, Mr. Chair, with regard to, to perhaps some of the language. I find that the language to be in some cases unnecessarily arcane and, and potentially leading us into some difficult territory down the road. I give you, for example, um, Article 7, which deals with uh, what is, what can or cannot be dumped on agricultural land. I know, because I've had confirmation of this from our CAO in a previous email when I first questioned this, that the intent of the paragraph is, in fact, to prohibit the dumping of, of rock onto agricultural land, just as an example. But I think a credible case can be made that in, in reading the language, one might be able to conclude the opposite. And if that kind of ambiguity exists within the language, I think it's, it would be wise of us to ensure that those ambiguities are removed, um, if, if ever challenged. Of course, uh, generally speaking, uh, ambiguities are resolved in favor of the party who did not write the, the language which means that if, uh, if, if there is a credible argument that could be made that, in fact, we can continue to dump things that we want to prohibit dumping in some of these areas, we should ensure that that doesn't happen. That's one example that, that I have shared with the CAO, and he understands, uh, I think, where I'm, I'm coming from. So I would say that, uh, that, that as we understand the intent, we can support the intent. I just want us to be sure that we go through the language before in a couple of weeks' time we, we uh, finalize the decision to ensure that those ambiguities are, are removed and that there is real clarity, real crystal clarity if possible with regard to what it is that this bylaw uh, provides. Okay, Mr. CAO, can you comment on that? As to if, if changes can be made, if they're going through our legal department, what's involved? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, to answer the Councillor's question, I have looked at this um, clause and understand that it could be, um, the wording could be confusing and it does take a few reads to sort of get a grip on it, so perhaps it's not the best wording. Uh, I would recommend that Council not engage in wordsmithing this evening, that would be a function of staff, so um, if Council would direct that Administration go back and look at clarifying Section 7. Uh, a number uh, one uh, to make sure that the wording is clear um, uh, then that would be included in the um, amended bylaw that would be uh, considered at the next council meeting for approval if, if that's the direction that council would like to go in. Okay. Is that a direction we'd like to go in or for the comments on that particular? I think it's needed. Se section 7 is one. I, I, I trust that, that the review would be broader than that with whatever suggestions we might wish to bring to you if we, if we do, um, through, through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Councilor Ruby, I have a question just to, to kind of jump in front of you here. Um, has this already been through our legal department? Yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman, yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yes, and, 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 and I am sure, I'm, I'm absolutely confident that uh, the lawyers who wrote this understand exactly what they said. <laughs> the problem is that I need to understand and others need to understand what exactly what it is that the lawyers said. So uh, so I ask that that be reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how difficult it is. I think it's probably more a matter of syntax and grammar and, and, and not a whole lot more. But, but, but certainly the intent as I understand it to be is exactly the right intent and Wordsmithing, I think, should be left to staff and support. I'm anxious that we not delay this any further than we have, so I'm, I'm looking forward to a um, 
proofread, if, if that's the word to use, version of this coming to our council meeting in, in two weeks' time in, in a form that we can we can move on. Okay. That's, is that a problem? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if that is a staff direction, then council should probably mandate that as a whole. You want a resolution? I, I would like, like a resolution just to make the staff direction official. Okay. I, I would be more than happy to move that, Mr. Chair. Okay. We need a seconder for no. that, or we don't need, we don't need a seconder. seconder. Okay. Just all okay. So, okay. Mr. Captain Chair, Mr. just just in relation to some wording. So, uh, as I understand it from Council Ribiak's motion, we are going to look at our legal department, as you call it, the legal staff. We're going to look at seven A one, and I have just some questions about and 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 would hope that legal folks would look at uh, another element. So, I'd like to raise it now, Mr. Chair, in hopes that maybe we can just add that in. Okay, um, and, and that is. The, the, in the definition section, there's um, some areas there, for example, significant heritage landscapes. Excuse me, Sarah, which page are you on here? Um, page, well, mine says 65. Okay. So it's J, uh, no, sorry, uh, L under definitions, 1L. Okay. Significant heritage landscapes means properties within a heritage conservation district, properties designated pursuant to the Ontario Heritage Act, and properties designated in the town's official plan. It seemed to me that you would almost have to, with the and, you'd have to meet all three criteria. I don't know if that's the intent. I thought the intent might be that you should meet one of the criteria. There, and there's another example, which is productive agricultural lands <coughs> identified in the official plan of the town, the official plan of the region, and the official plan here, and the and it's used for farm business, etc. So. It seems to me that the ands are constricting what's in the definition as opposed to keeping it more open. So I don't think that's the intention, and I would just ask that we could add to this, looking at the definition section, specifically some of these and uh, definitions. Uh, I don't know if the CEO wants to comment on the whether it should be broad or narrow. I think the ands narrow it. I think it should be broader. Okay, Mr. CAO, your comment? Or? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one to the mayor. I, I, uh, it's a good question. I don't have an answer per se. I think that's a question for. Uh, I would like to get advice from legal on that. My understanding, though, is that when you define uh, productive ag agricultural lands, you have to make sure that you're not creating a conflict with other legislation, uh, be it our own legislation, regional legislation, provincial legislation, so that you have to meet a number of tests. Uh, so if you say that, uh, and, well, you have, uh, here's the definition, it is this and this and this and this, because uh, we need to ensure that we're not uh, overstepping our boundaries mm -hmm. uh, as far as the authority of council goes in defining what productive <laughs> agricultural lands is in a provincial context. So um, having said that, I will certainly go back and ask for uh, just to make sure that that's the appropriate uh, wording in that we're, we're, we're properly dealing with the definition. If it can be broadened with an or, uh, then uh, I'll, I'll come back and, and provide council with some uh, uh, advice on that. Okay. 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 Any further comments? Councillor Papp? Or, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, a couple of areas. Uh, along the same lines as the mayor, just under section one, uh, when it talks about detrimental effects, means contamination. Uh, the obvious question I have is uh, who makes that determination? And um, maybe that could be, you don't have to answer that now. It just it seems to imply that automatically there's, there's some sort of contamination. The other section that I would like to get either as a uh, suggested appendices, one of the provisos, one of the principles that we were uh, working on this was to ensure that we did not encroach on any privacy rights and that the methodology in which we went about enforcing this bylaw would, have, in fact, respect the rights of both the town and that of the individual property owners. So under Section 9 and Arms uh, 10, perhaps at some point, whether we do this this evening, I know, Mr. CAO, that you and the Chief brought back a uh, bylaw enforcement protocol that I would consider to be much more reasonable, fair, and uh, structured. Uh, it may be worthwhile that uh, the general public and us be aware of how that works so there's no misconstruction of how this would apply if in fact we move ahead with that so 
Um, you can do it tonight or include it as appendices. I don't know how the legal, how that would be done, but I know I've done, I've seen that attached to say if we're going to enforce it, this is how we're going to go about doing that. So, uh, and then finally, I just, uh, a comment, it's just the general provision. I'm still somewhat, I'm not, unsure, I'm, I'm unsure of Section 2 application that now, and, I, and I'm picking up sort of what Councilor Ribiak was saying that this was a problem that originated out in the rural area. Now it looks like we're going to apply this application across the whole town. And um, I have concerns about that, but uh, nonetheless, if you may uh, could address those issues, I'd uh, appreciate it, Mr. CEO. And Mr. CEO, you had some comments um, on that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On the issue of the enforcement, um, I will I will uh, respond with some information to council. Um, I think it's important to understand that the inspection part, the enfor enforcement piece. Uh, is a authority granted to municipalities um, in Ontario by the provincial government, uh, depending on what act you are dealing with or referencing. Uh, so in this case, um, you are the authority for you to pass this bylaw is contained within the Municipal Act. Mm -hmm. The Municipal Act gives Council the authority to enter onto property for the purpose of inspection and enforcement of a bylaw. The problem is that if you don't include that authority in the bylaw itself, you don't have the authority to enforce it. So it's kind of ironic, but you don't have the ability to enforce the bylaw, why pass it? So um, it's important that you give yourself the authority that's been granted under an act, but you, you reference it specifically in a bylaw. Uh, in this case, it's a bylaw that is under the jurisdiction of the Municipal Government Act. Uh, second of all, um, it, I, I wouldn't recommend that council put a process in, in how we enforce it. Rather, uh, understand that the fire chief has uh, asked and received a uh, blessing on his policies with regards to enforcement and the protocols. Uh, so again, I can say that um, although the bylaw gives us the ability to enforce, uh, we will not be doing it in a manner that is intrusive or violates uh, the uh, the individual's uh, property rights. I mean, that's not what the town is here to accomplish. Um, the town, if it does need to enter onto property in order to conduct an ins inspection or an investigation, will uh, will use the the risk assessment uh, protocols that the chief has developed and will follow uh, the enforcement uh, policy that's been endorsed by council. And there will be no surprise visits. There will be no unannounced visits. There will be no. Uh, you know, this is all about respect and resolving issues, but it's also the responsibility of the municipality to protect the environment within its boundaries. So I think that this establishes both the enforcement uh, abilities, but it also does it in a way that will be enforced using the previously uh, approved policy and procedures uh, through the bylaw office. So I, I think that's very important uh, to, to understand. Okay, thank you. Further comments, Councillor Kersey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, through you to our CAO. Um, I just want to get some clarity. For the most part, I like the bylaw. I think it, it's very sensible and uh, it does answer some of the main concerns that uh, were brought forward by our citizenry. Um, I just wanted clarity with respect to the definition of a water course and uh, the presence of swales in subdivisions. Uh, to understand that the definition of the water course here implies that drainage plans within existing subdivisions and newly undertaken subdivisions once they're passed to the, to the town will be enforced by way of this uh, um, bylaw. Uh, yeah, that's the intent, Mr. Chairman, is to protect water courses, and absolutely that's the, the purpose. So, yes. Any further comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Just need to vote okay. on staff okay. Well, before we do that, um, just to, I have a, a question. Now, it sounds like we're making um, Change. some changes to this. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to? How? What would be our best course to present this to ourselves and to the public before we pass that? Just so we're not 
doing this on the eve of passing it. Like myself personally, when it comes time to pass this, I want it to come up and there it is and we're done. So maybe we should have one more look at it. I know it's going to add a couple more weeks, but um, perhaps it won't, but I don't know what, what's, what would be, I'm opening it for everyone's <coughs> discussion, what's going to be our best way to uh, finish this off. Do you understand my question? Uh, I, I do, Mr. Chair. Okay. No, that will <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think from, from what I've heard in the response from from staff, I did, I did too have concerns about uh, enforcement. I had concerns about water courses. I had concerns about wording. Uh, the two have been answered with the response from the CAO. The third, uh, we're going to give staff direction. Uh, but I think the, the wording changes are, as I understood them, minor okay. as, and to provide clarity as opposed to, to jumble it up or anything or change the meaning or the intent. Um, I'm personally quite comfortable giving the staff direction, and I know we need to vote on that, but giving the staff direction to clarify it with, with uh, legal saying, you know what, we need to clarify those particular items and, and uh, then council can look at it. So I, I that's, I think we've, Council Ribiak will probably speak to this further, but we have been discussing this for a long time. Um, and, it, and it even predates this council, uh, Mr. Chair, it goes back to, for a long time. So uh, I know that the, the latest in terms of the environmental protection element um, is a is a, a recent change um, in in terms of the last six months or so, uh, and using the creative problem solving process. But I, I do think because we use that process, uh, and we agreed to that, and we heard, you know, and the public was here, and we did it all. Um, I'm very confident in in the result that we're in. Yeah. Um, so I'm very pleased to, you know, have this come to council. And if there's some minor issues, okay. then we can consider. Mm -hmm not adopting it or whatever, but to bring it forward to the next council, I think is, I would be comfortable with that. Okay. Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to add my uh, my sentiment to that. I think, I think we understand completely what's inside of this. And I think that uh, the length of the process and the use of the creative uh, problem solving process has allowed us to support every element of this thing through its entire development. So, at this point, it's, it's, it's really uh, getting the words right. It up. We, the intent is clear. I think 99% of the words are right. There are a few issues that we have uh, uh, with, with some of the wording that, that will be clarified. We are going to receive copies of this in due course before our next meeting. We will have the chance to review this, and when we come uh, to our, our next meeting, if there's a misplaced comma or an undotted I, uh, I'm sure that we can amend the bylaw at that point with those corrections and pass, uh, uh, pass the bill. The intent is there. It, it covers all of the territory. I, I personally see no reason why it should take any longer than okay. the administrative minimum time required. Right. Anyone else? My comments were just to make sure that we get crystal clarity, that's all. Okay. Need to vote on the staff direction. Okay, so we need a vote on the staff direction. Is yep. that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Those opposed? Carry. So as presented. As presented with the staff amendments. Okay. So now we're going to. Oh, so no, we've done the staff no. direction. So just vote on this. Just vote on this. So we're just going to vote on what we initially said. Mm -hmm. So as yeah. presented. In okay. consideration of the staff direction. Okay. Okay. As presented in consideration of the staff uh, amendments. Okay, that's correct. All right, all those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. Okay, good job, Mr. Chair. What do we got next? That's it. Okay, all right. Our uh, next item is a motion from Councillor Akursi, second by Councillor Papp that this regular meeting of policy and priorities be adjourned until the next regular meeting being the Committee of the Whole, scheduled for Monday, March 4th, 2013, unless sooner called by the Mayor. All those in favor? Those opposed? Carried. This meeting is adjourned.
It's a good time, too. Run with your two on someone. Crank that. That was a busy <laughs> agenda. I was. Yeah, yeah. That was good. I think you know what? Right. We're getting the camera. Starting to see the impact of having this just already in policy and yeah, you know, the scope meeting. Yeah. We've already broken it all down. Start to set in bed. Start to see the flow coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was good though. I mean, you guys did a lot of policy work tonight. It wasn't. Oh, no, that's all right. It wasn't I that painful. Just, <laughs> too far ahead. That's all right. Yeah. It is no, what it is. Good. I just, want, I just wish somebody would have said that the naming policy, we've been waiting for this since 2007 and we finally got it. <laughs> we don't want to throw sticks. I can't do this. Another one off the list. Right? Okay, so this is it. 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 This